Welcome back to the Director's Garage. It gets dumber and dumber, folks. I am your host and resident idiot, Michael, and in today's episode, I'm going to push myself back into an area that I swore to myself I would never revisit. And, and the reason I swore that I wouldn't revisit this particular situation is... It's the most expensive and costly way to purchase anything. <laughs> Stay with me, I'm gonna get into it. Now back when I started this channel, I learned the lesson early and often. I bought, for instance, the new Empire Ears Odin, sight unseen and sound unheard. <laughs> But it was the Founders Edition! The Founders themselves blessed this pair of IEMs, signed all kinds of crap with permanent marker. Who are the Founders? I don't know. But they're the Founders, by God! <laughs> Unfortunately, those Founders made me a headphone that was just too damn bright. And when I went to sell them, boom! I lost $1,600. <laughs> I have gone through this wash cycle more times than I care to admit. Purchasing drop headphones and moon drop headphones and the audio IEMs only to lose hundreds on them and eventually just give half of them away in the process. And like half the lights weren't on in this place. Why didn't y'all tell me? Okay. Now, today's headphone is indeed a flagship class headphone and I bought it new. Now, I'm going to tell you the way my twisted, screwed up mind came to convince myself that this, this right here was the right decision. Now, I tell you this because I believe in my heart, deep down in the very core of myself as a male on this planet, that every one of you has made a stupid purchase using the exact same rationale. Now, I'm not saying that this story will be exactly your experience. I'm saying that we all do this dumbass thing of talking ourselves into something really, really expensive that we don't really need, and then try to cover the gory bloodletting of a purchase with the soothing aloe of cold rationalization. <laughs> well, let's see if this story sounds a little too familiar to you comment below. Now this all started because I was thinking about picking up a used LCD4. Now I started searching them out, running the classifieds on HeadFi, I asked fellow addicts what they thought about it, and they were all encouraging, of course. I even considered the LCD4Z. After all, it's newer, right? It's gotta be better. No, 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 my wise panel of heroin pushers advise me. The 4 is where it's at. Never mind that a good 4 is selling for about the same price of the newer 4Z. That's only proof that the 4 was the the shit and you gotta have the shit my friend they were excellent bullshit artists and i know they were great because in any other situation i'm the guy saying that you gotta buy that man it's the best thing ever so i start narrowing down my purchase of an lcd4 it's practically in my hands just a mouse click or two away and a, a new headphone but just announced a flagship a flagship you say yes yes that means it's it's the best headphone they know how to make it's going to be the hot new product that everybody wants and everyone is dying to hear and you my friend you can be among the very first to hear it the four everybody has done a review of the lcd4 you moron you're gonna dump good money into a product that everybody has already reviewed you my friend can be on the cutting edge well the cutting edge of financial ruin but that kind of attitude isn't going to get the shiny new headphone into my greedy little paws. So let's shove sanity and common sense back into the dungeon where it belongs. Slam that trap door shut and swallow the key because you, my friend, have a purchase to make. So yeah, common sense kind of left the room there. And as a result, it's months later and I'm about to get a good dose of reality, albeit in a really sensational package. Let's dig in. So this headphone comes to us courtesy of me. Yeah, I bought it. It was my idea to buy it, and I will be the one who ultimately pays the price. So, want credit? It's me. Want blame? 
got you covered. So there's not that much to this box. Just a couple of little pieces of tape and we're ready to go. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Wah! Oh, 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 we got ourselves a case. Well, that's going to tell you something because not everybody ships their headphone in cases. Let's dig deeper. Wah! Oh my God, can you see that? Can you see that right there? Maybe you can't. It's a traditional craft with a little logo maybe you all recognize. What do you think, guys? Should we open it? Oh, yeah. What? And oh my God, look at this, guys. Look at this, look at this, look at this. It's the ZMF Atrium. Yes, it's the ZMF Atrium. I mean, look at this thing. It's just stunning. You've got kind of the copper with the worn away, kind of aged look there. This thing looks like it just belongs in a museum or something. It's so... Beautiful. The copper up here, all of it is sort of weathered and it looks a little older than it is. It's kind of almost got a steampunk vibe to it, you know? So what we're looking at here is basically $2,800 of depreciation in a box. <laughs> Folks, I am going to take a bath on this headphone. So maybe now's a good time to ask you to subscribe to the Director's Garage. At least be an enabler of my headphone addiction. Now, only you can help. <laughs> but what a gorgeous, gorgeous way to go. Now this, by far to me anyway, is the most beautiful thing Zach Bev and their addict supplying company has produced yet. Now, I may go broke, but I'm gonna look damn good doing it. So deeper in this box, let's check it out. You get a couple of extra headphone pads, and then you got this fancy little cloth here, and it looks like you get a little, oh, a welcome card, a thank you from uh, the manufacturer. I just tore the paper. That's not good for business. Um, <laughs> M. Lazar. Well, it's not me, but, you know, nice to see that I'm getting known in the world. M. Lazar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they tell you it's aged cherry. And then you get this little card with the two couple of different pads. And then, of course, you get this bag right here. It's a little thing. It's going to have the, the cables in it. And you get yourself a quarter inch unbalanced. And then you get the uh, Pentacon. Uh, and these are both mini mics. So that's great because my other headphone cables will work with the ZMF. So that's great. Let's start to set these up a little bit, and we'll talk about the name. Now, the atrium, an atrium is a is a room with a tall pitched ceiling. It's open, it's flowing. It's usually at the, like, sort of the entrance of a house. And they're kind of supposed to be an inviting place for visitors to gather. And I think these kind of fill the role of looking like an inviting headphone, doesn't it? So you've got biocellulose drivers inside these things, and now I've been a fan of biocellulose drivers since, oh, going all the way back to the Fostex. Remember those Fostex THXOOs that I liked so much? Well, yeah, those are all biocellulose drivers, and what's great about them is that they're capable of moving a massive amount of air in a very quick way, and these should pair quite well with both solid state and tube amps. And Zach says these things are superior in technicalities to the Verite, which to my ears should mean that they're quite good in soundstage and detail. Of course, there's only one way to know, and I think we're getting to that director's garage sound impression. What do you think? So I'm gonna get things started with a little Stevie Ray Vaughan and couldn't stand the weather. It's a lot of mid-bass presence right off the bat. I don't know how deep it goes. A little on the heavy side, as you might expect. Wow. The, the first snare snapped, and it really made a huge impact. Like, it just punched itself right out of the mix. It was fantastic. I'm hearing a lot of air in these. these. These are very spacious. I get the sense that there's some major bass happening down low. The, the bass line is really tracking well. My initial impression is 
It's a it's a very knitted together sound. No, there's not a lot of hyper detail in these. This isn't like a detail king. Man, stuff is coming. The, the width of the sound stage is very impressive. These are very musical. When a cymbal crashes, it seems to like extend. Like there, there's a width to these. Oh. Then more drumming, more drumming effects. Very, very impressive. There's great mid bass presence. I, I just don't know. I think it may roll off a bit when we get into the sub. I'm definitely connecting to the music. I mean, you're you're really immersed in it. This is a cozier pair of headphones. You really you sense that everything's in, which is kind of odd because then the sound is extending so far out. But they're relatively tight on the head. Now, the other thing to remember is these are typically tend to be a pretty pad respondent pair of headphones. So any change in pads is going to change the sound considerably. And I have some pads for this. But the musicality of these is unquestionable. They're fun. These are more these are actually more fun to me than the Verite opens. And I, I prefer a fun tuning to something that's trying to get extremely pre precise. But I don't think these are as fast as the Verites. They don't come across as, as having that edge. What a great listen, though. Let's jump down to, to Cold Shot. There's a nice gliss on top of the mix. But... These are nowhere near bright. Like they're really on the more recessed side of the uh, of life. Let's check out something else. I'm gonna go to Los Lobos now, real quick. I'm gonna go to Dream in Blue, and I want to hear how far this bass extends. Is it jumping as low? Yeah, it's mid bass. It seems to roll off as it goes into the sub. But they're not bright at all. Like they really, the upper mids, lower treble range. It feels good. There's a lot of bass presence, but there's not like that deep slam. I'm not getting that that sub bass slam that kind of kicks you in your ass in the back of the head. I don't. I'm not getting a, a really massive impression of that. I'm getting more of an impression of really good solid bass and it's and it's blending well with the music. I don't call these reference though because there is a, a, a bump there in that mid bass. And it's alluring, it's a good sound. One thing we know about Zach and his headphones is that they really do change characteristics and you know if you pull them further out you might get more of that sub activated i don't know we have to play with the pads and that's all going to come when we do the sound check we'll roll through the pads on those it's a really enjoyable winning sound though very musical and i gotta think these are going to connect well with jazz i'm going to go to let's go to um cannonball adderley maybe and autumn leaves oh yeah DSD-64 of uh, Cannonball Adderley, something else. I would like that sub bass, though. I think that that's something that this headphone could use. And, and maybe we'll get there with some different pads. But man, for jazz, where you don't have that sub bass kick, it's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. The Verite to me, and this is going back a couple of years, so, you know, take this all with a grain of salt. The Verite to me were very technical, like they had a very, uh, very fast sound to them. Uh, but I didn't feel like they were as well stitching the music together. These sound like it's really, they're focusing on music and musicality. And that suits me a little better. Now, these are a little bit on the warm side. It's a little warm in here anyway, but these do come across a little on the warm side. Ooh. <laughs> a 
the sax just came in and it's and it's up here and out really cool mm. I'm really enjoying hearing these masters exchange back and forth it's a conversation I'm gonna go to an acoustic player this is Leo Kotke he's one of the greatest acoustic players of all time this is a slide number called sleepwalk from Leo Kotke wow, this is really impressive and it's just a 12 string on slide with with some uh, phaser going on but it's really moody it's beautiful I want to listen to Macy Gray stripped it does it does a solid string bass so well I mean there's no bloom on the bottom end at all it's tight and it's thick it's a very thick bass. It's got a thick booty. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Macy sitting recessed the way she should in the sound stage. This is respect this headphone is respectful of the sound stage sort of that got laid down. It's not playing games with it at all, but it is replicating it very nicely. And, and the width on these are very nice. I'm going to jump to some rush now. I really want to push these things a little bit. I want to see what, what's going on when we really start hammering down a little bit. We'll even go to some harder rock in a minute. We're definitely... Hang on a second. Just because it's so loud. I, we're definitely not talking about a hyper-detailed set here. This is not about hyper-detail and giving you the, the, the leading edge of the notes and being able to, you know, sacrifice out ever, or separate out every single little uh, symbol and triangle tick and stuff like that. This is about stitching together music in a really uh, attractive package. It's given me a balanced presentation, and I, and I don't mean that in terms of reference. Re don't exchange reference and balanced. Reference to me means that they're very flat, and they're giving you an exact rep representation, or as close to a representation, of what was recorded as it possibly can without enhancing anything. This is enhancing some bass, and it's definitely there's some curving off in the treble area. I can't tell where yet. I gotta get with these a little bit more. But what it's doing is it's giving this this very impressive presentation of the sound. And and by that I mean it's giving me a very nice sound stage, but it's stitching together the components into something that's very seamless. You're not sitting there going, "Wow, that's a really impressive tom hit." You're you're more like it's like it's blending everything together. And and that's what I'm getting most from these so far. And again, I haven't tried the different pads, but that's my initial impression of these is that it's a really good blending of sound and it's stitching together all of the elements that we really enjoy about our music in a, in a very coherent way. And it's very pleasing. It's a very pleasing winning sound. Uh, not, not reference, but balanced, if that can make sense to you. All right, let's continue on a little bit. Just a few more and then we'll call it a day. But I'm enjoying the ride, and it's hard for me to take these off when I'm enjoying hearing think this music in this coherent fashion that maybe I haven't heard in this way in a while for these songs. All right, I want to go to a couple of really hyper-detailed things, and I just want to push these a little bit. And the first one I'm going to go to is Elton John Tumbleweed Connection. This is Ballad of a Well-Known Gun, Tumbleweed Connection, Elton John. And again, it fills in that bottom so well. It's not kicking deep into the sub, though. And that's something I hope I can find a little bit, playing with the pads just a little bit. But it's... Everything is so seamless on this headphone. I'll try one other one. 
This is Honky Cat. You get a little more piano in this one. It's so beautiful. This is a really beautiful sound. Oh. Cause the horns when they come in. Wow. I, I'm gonna pause it here and, and I have a few things to say about this before we before we go any uh, any further. And there is a wow to this. There is no question there is a wow to these. And I want to play with them more before I like render anything impressive. We can say though out of the gate that this is an impressive set. And what I, what I'm getting from these is a lot of what I like about Fostex headphones and about the drop Fostex headphones. It's it doesn't have the slam of the Fostex, but it's got a much more refined sound but they're in the Fostex lane they're in that Fostex lane and that to me is like right where I really enjoy listening to music it just happens to be a lane that I really enjoy these are exceptionally comfortable maybe a touch on the warm side they feel like a fit and finish of as good as anything I've had from anyone. This is real leather. This feels like real leather. The look and the finish on these is just, it. you feel value in these. This leather down here feels great. And then there's all this kind of bumpy material underneath to kind of give you a more cushy feel on the head side of things. The, the cups are just positively gorgeous there's a starburst thing happening here which i think you can pick up it's coming off of here so like everything about these has a uh, they have of the highest quality feel to them so in terms of value i'm going to say i'm not disappointed with these at all uh, I want to play a little bit with the sound and see if I can just see if with a cup with a couple of different pads if I can maybe pull a little more down deep down low out. It's a lean bass even though it's thick, which is really a nice place to be delivering bass from. The I have had plenty of surprises in the sound stage and in the image on these with little hits surprising me and the the horns on elton john were just coming in at fun angles and giving me those little pops of sound that i think a good headphone should deliver i'm i'm very impressed with these out of the gate i don't know that they're my end game because i do miss that sub bass and i haven't found it yet in just the first little listening session i would like a little bit of slam and i think this may have it if you go to a thicker pad i just got to play around with it that's all we can do with these so that's the zmf atrium and wow what a ride i've got amps to test i've got voltages i want to try this on everything this is a headphone that makes me track seek and amp seek and i want to find out what where can i find that bleeding edge of ultimate headphone greatness and i think that they're inside of this i just got to find out now you know we're going to be back with a full sound check of these these are a lust worthy headphone and in the coming weeks we'll do that in-depth review just give me a chance to play with different pads and combinations and amps and all of that uh, I've got to parlay this because this is going to be a massive loss if I ever go to sell these. So I'm going to parlay this into at least another episode, you know that, and it'll have a shootout or something along the way. Now, up next, we are going to head into an actual shootout. I have a mini shootout sound check coming for those impressive Muse Hi-Fi powers. Can they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 7 Hertz Timeless? 
That's a shootout I'm dying to do. Now, we're going to know by the end of that show which one reigns supreme. I will name a winner for sure. And I want to, of course, thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day here at the Director's Garage. Give this episode a thumbs up because, I mean, atrium, folks. No, come on. All right. Or you can totally do the other thing if you'd rather see the Director's Garage reduced to a pile of kindling. Let's see what Zach can make out of a pile of kindling. All right. I will... See you guys before you know it. Get out of here.